Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks. I'm here in New York City in Central Park, and I'm gonna be reviewing the OnePlus X. This Mobile Geeks video is powered by Asus. So let's start by taking the OnePlus X out of the box. So we've got the phone. It also comes with a bumper and a SIM unlock. Next, we have a quick start guide. It comes with a micro USB cable and a wall adapter. So there's no denying that OnePlus has made a gorgeous handset. I'd even argue that this is nicer than the OnePlus 2. The version that we have has the Gorilla Glass on the back. And surprisingly, for as much as you want to like touch it, it never really looks like it's greasy or full of fingerprints, which I love whatever coating they've put on there. So let's start off with a walk around the system. What we have here is a nice texturized button that you can easily slide to mute your phone or to only let in uh, important or priority messages. Taking a look at the bottom of the device, we have stereo speakers as well as a micro USB. And on the right hand side of the device, we have a power button, volume rocker, as well as a dual SIM card slot. So this is a great feature for this phone. So I'm here in New York and I have had two uh, SIM cards popped in here. The other option is that you can replace one of the SIM cards with a micro SD card for expansion. And this is something that you will want to do because it only comes with 16 gigabytes of memory and 11 and a half of those are usable. And if we take a look at the top of the device, here's where we have the headset as well as a microphone. The back, we have the OnePlus logo with a 13 megapixel camera right here, single flash. If we take a closer look at the camera, the OnePlus X is capable of some pretty decent shots. In perfect lighting, it can actually impress. But when you head into low light, taking pictures of this candle, the detail looks okay, right? If you choose the exposure spots correctly. But when we start to go into kind of low light situations, it's just average. So here's the Statue of Liberty. Here we are in 100% zoom. That actually really impressed me. I didn't think we'd be able to see the Statue of Liberty at all. In good lighting conditions, the phone is capable of some very decent shots. This edge is actually not that noisy. So if we just take a look at these architectural shots, so this is the Freedom Tower. I, it looks really good. Here's the Flatiron with HDR, backlit, there's still a great, a great amount of detail on the building itself. I think it also helps to have this great AMOLED display to show off your photos. One of the issues is once you take the photos off the phone, uh, they're a little less vibrant. These are taken in a bar. It's impossible to make out faces. <laughs> And here's one with the flash on. It's, it's really terrible. So if you want to take nighttime shots with this in low light environments, I'd pick a different phone. So if we take a look at the OS itself, I'm actually a really big fan of Oxygen 12.1. Uh, I wasn't a fan on the OnePlus 2, but it seems like on this version, they have really nailed uh, all the glitches. Everything's a lot smoother. Uh, I love this feature where you can pull down uh, from anywhere to get the notification bar. Uh, since this is a five inch handset, it is easier to manage with one hand. I am not gonna try to do that right now because it is a slippery phone and I don't have the case on and I'm terrified of dropping it. So here's actually one of the problems of why it's so slippery. The metal band has lines that are up and down. So when you hold it in your hand, it's easier to slip out. If they'd made it a texturized side, it would, make, it would make the phone a lot more grippable, but since it has this slippery, shiny back with these lines that just make the phone want to slide out of your hand, this is one of the big problems. I haven't had any problems feeling like this phone is too slippery with the case that they've included. I highly recommend that you do pop it in here because otherwise you will be dropping it a ton. One thing that I'm a big fan of is the fact that we do have the hardware buttons here at the bottom, so it gives you easier reign of controlling the display. You can also see while we're down here that there is a screen protector that came included with the handset. Now when it comes to performance, I have to admit that I have not been very disappointed with this. 
Occasionally, I will have to wait for an app to load, but overall, I wouldn't say that the fact that this is running a Snapdragon 801 processor is a big deal. Unless you're a spec hound, it shouldn't really matter. It comes with three gigabytes of RAM, which I think is extremely helpful. When you're gaming with this device, it does heat up a little bit here in the back corner. But If we head into the settings, you'll be extremely happy to find out that there is a lot of customization available. The buttons have a lot to offer. Double tap, I can choose what I want it to do, turn on the screen, open shelf. Taking a look at gestures, we can do O to open the camera, double tap to wake, so let's try that. And there we go, the camera is on. So there's a lot of gestures within the back end of this OS. Heading into storage, I've been using this for about a week here in New York and I'm down to seven gigs available. I have yet to load the benchmarks, which I'll be running a little bit later, but I've already taken about 400 and half a gig. You really wanna use an SD card for this. Taking a look at the battery, so far I haven't had any trouble getting through the day. I would say I would start at about nine and I have no problem coming home at about midnight. And as you can see, I'm doing a lot of stuff like walking tours and a lot of camera. One thing that is lacking is that there is no fingerprint sensor on this device, which is a little bit unfortunate, but this is mid-range, so it is kind of expected. So, do I think you should pick up the OnePlus X? Absolutely. It's a beautiful smartphone. It runs quite well, even though it has an older processor. The display is very nice. The AMOLED has nice black blacks, and it has a very thin bezel, so you, can, you can't even see where the display kind of hits the edge of the phone. I like the performance, even though it has an older chipset. It also has dual SIM. The only downside is if you want to use the micro SD card for expansion, you're going to need to give up one of those SIM card slots. So the things you're really going to have to give up when you buy the OnePlus X are the expectations of having an excellent camera. It has a good camera when you want to take daytime photos, but once it gets into night, it's very noisy and like you saw in the photos I took in a club, completely unusable. You're also going to have problems with LTE. The bands aren't even supported here in the US, but it does come in at a really good price point of $249 if you can get it through the invite system. That's also another negative. All in all, I've really enjoyed my time with the OnePlus X here in New York. I hope you liked this video. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, why don't you do that? Every subscriber helps as well as every like. I'm your host, Nicole Scott for Mobile Geeks. Yeah.